Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> One washer is not as heavy as ten washers, so how can a single washer be used to lift ten washers? Sounds impossible, but the answer is centripetal force. Centripetal force? What's that? You are going to see for yourself. Check this out. Dr. Smith has one washer in one hand and ten washers in the other. He is first going to put a string through a short PVC tube that has a very smooth top. He then ties 10 washers to one end of a roughly 6 foot length of string and ties the other end of the string to a single washer. Dr. Smith is now swinging the single washer in a circle over his head. Centripetal force is the force that keeps the single washer moving in a circle. However, the centripetal force is not enough to lift the 10 washers off the ground. Dr. Smith is swinging the single washer too slowly. Centripetal force increases when the speed of the object moving in the circle increases. So Dr. Smith swings the single washer even faster until the centripetal force exceeds the weight of the 10 washers and lifts the 10 washers off the ground. When the 10 washers remain at a constant height off the ground, the centripetal force exactly matches the weight of the 10 washers. Notice when the single washer being swung in a circle has a large circular path, in other words, the diameter of the circle is large, the single washer only needs to move at a slower speed to achieve a centripetal force equal to the weight of the 10 washers. When the circular path is made small, a faster speed is necessary to achieve a centripetal force equal to the weight of the 10 washers. That's pretty cool. Regardless of the size of the circle, the centripetal force always equals the weight of the 10 washers. The speed of the swung washer just needs to be made larger for smaller circles. The centripetal force is the tension in the string, and this tension is constantly pulling on the single washer, keeping it moving in a circle, and at the same time pulling on the ten washers, lifting them off the ground. Centripetal force is always directed toward the center of the circle. Centripetal force is toward the center of the circle? What are you talking about? Don't believe me? Check this out. Dr. Smith has a candle that he is going to ignite, place in a jar, then swing in a circle. Centripetal force is what keeps the lit candle moving in a circle. Now look closely at the flame of the candle because it is pointing in the direction of centripetal force. It does not matter where the candle is in the circular path. The flame is always pointing toward the center of the circle. What if the candle is swung in the opposite direction? Will it change the direction of the centripetal force? That's a good question. Nope. Centripetal force is always directed toward the center of the circular path of motion. You can have a lot of fun with a centripetal force board. Anything that is flat, rigid, and that allows holes to be made in it can be used to make a centripetal force board. Dr. Smith is going to cut out a square of wood to make a centripetal force board. He first drills a hole at each corner of the square he will be cutting out. Now he is cutting the board. Now 
Dr. Smith is cutting two six-foot lengths of string to support his centripetal force board. He aligns the strings, and at their exact center, he ties a knot, which will keep all the strings together and also be used for easy handling of the centripetal force board. It is very important for the board to hang horizontally, so he marks each of the four strings exactly the same length from the knot. Dr. Smith is marking at 24 inches. Next, he puts one of the strings through a hole in the corner of the board and ties a knot exactly at the mark he made. He repeats this at each of the remaining corners. When completed, he has a horizontal board hanging from four strings. The centripetal force board is pretty fun to play with. Dr. Smith placed a glass of water on the board. Since centripetal force is always pointed toward the center of the circular path, it allows him to make some surprising motions with the glass of water. Dr. Smith is going to swing a coin over his head with the necessary centripetal force being applied through a hanger. He first bends the hook of the hanger to make it horizontal. He then pulls on the hanger to make a diamond shape. He is first balancing a penny and using centripetal force applied through the hanger to swing the penny in a circle. Now the same with a nickel. Let's use centripetal force and inertia to see if we can stop a falling wine glass. Dr. Smith has a five foot piece of string, a hexagonal nut, wine glass, and a pencil. You may want to use more or less string depending on how tall you are. He first ties a hexagonal nut on one end of the string and the wine glass on the other. He is now hanging the wine glass over the pencil and holding the hexagonal nut with the other hand. When he lets go of the nut, the wine glass falls to the ground and... Won't the wine glass break? Well, yeah, it did a few times until Dr. Smith had some practice. Watch this. Let's review. Centripetal force is present when any object is traveling in a circle. It is the force that keeps the object moving in the circle. Centripetal force is always directed toward the center of a circle. The same centripetal force can be exerted when the object moves in a large circle with a slow speed or a small circle at a higher speed.